Hello, everybody. This is an attempt, number three, actually, to redo my video that I had up last night, but it was messed up, so I had to delete it. I tried to redo it this morning, and the recording failed for some reason. So, um, right now, I'm going to try to do this again. And what I wanted to do a video, a video about this morning was... Uh, purchase agreements between uh, the buyers and the sellers or a um, health guarantee for the puppy between the buyer and seller. So there's all kinds of health guarantees uh, that you can get and uh, the they're basically made, the purchase agreement and the health guarantee can be two separate papers or they can be the same one for you know contracts uh, that will protect the puppy mainly from being used as merchandise and not cared about and it makes the puppy have the best life it could possibly have it protect protects the buyer from accidentally buying a puppy that someone may have spent almost no money on its health care or its uh you know, anything about its parents or whatever. Um, you know, it's just self-explanatory, but there'll be conditions and terms in these agreements. Uh, there'll be warranties sometimes. Warranties can vary. I've seen them online that were just like, you know, filled out the puppy's name. There was no microchip number. Uh, there was just a bare minimum of information the puppy was guaranteed for 30 days if you took it to a vet and had it looked at. And all the way up to an agreement for purchasing, which would be pre-arranging for a puppy in some cases, paying a non-refundable deposit, uh, paying the balance when you picked up the puppy. There's things in the agreement that are uh, laws from state to state about how old the puppy has to be what the state requires. Uh, some agreements will have things inside like that you agree. Well, let's just, let's just get in into this. Um, on some of them, you know, it'll say something like, you know, you agree, you're the buyer, you agree to keep the dog in good condition, regularly get its uh, medications, vaccinations, deworming, flea, tick, heartworm prevention and all at the vet. Um, Feed it nutritional food, which sometimes is named in the contract, and some people will add a year onto the contract if you feel feed the puppy that kind of food that they recommend. If you agree to it, you prove you did it. Uh, you get an extra year guarantee. Um, they put in there, you know, that you're in compliance with all your state laws. Um, you know, you ha they specify you have to have exams by a licensed vet. When you buy the puppy, the seller should have all of the health information that's required uh, furnished to you. It should have the records, the vet that did the things, the microchip numbers paired to the puppy. That's in a, in a perfect world if you get a really good agreement. Um, if you do have to... Uh, you know, if it gets to the point that you do have to exchange the puppy or a refund or whatever, how, or get money, you know, if it's in your contract about paying a certain percentage of veterinary bills, if something that was covered in the agreement fails, um, the, the seller has uh, usually will keep the right to have their vet check the puppy as well. Um, there's just all kinds of different scenarios. So I just... Uh, Roxy, you ready to come I would in just too? make sure that you have everything in the contract that's important to you, that's legal, that will cover you. Um, anything you don't do as a buyer that's in the contract will void your contract. It can. Anything the seller doesn't do can void your contract. That's in the you know that's in the contract. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people will claim they can guarantee. The, how big the dog will get, the color, the temperament, the coat quality, shedding or non-shedding, uh, like 
fertility, like including testicle presence. I have to say ton, my little English bulldog, I took him at six or seven months old to get him neutered and they couldn't find him. There was a bag there with tissue in it, but they couldn't find him. They said they looked all up in his body up around in that area and they couldn't even find him in there. So they removed tissue as well as they could and said, you know, that's what we did. They charged me my vet fee and went on their way. So that does happen. And, uh, but, but people can't guarantee uh, size or confirmation. They can't really do that. And if they do, it's kind of a red flag. I mean, on your DNA testing, like on mine, it says my girls are low shedding. They've got the lowest of the low shedding genes. I think it's SHD, SHD or something. But anyway, on the now I'm gonna have to get a male, and I'm gonna get one that's that's like it may be recommended by Gana or maybe someone that contacts me that has a health tested clear ichthyosis male poodle, I uh, standard size. Yeah, I'll do that. But I, I'll have my testing. I'll do everything I can do about the coat color and the uh, coat length and the shedding factor and uh, all that. But you really cannot guarantee that. You can do the best guess you can. The vet can do the best guess they can, maybe, if you want them to. So that will probably be in the contract, even though they're doing their best to tell you. You know, you'll cover yourselves. The seller can cover themselves like they can't guarantee against illnesses or parasites brought on by transferring the puppy from one place to another because stress can ignite illnesses. It can start parasite infestations. I mean, there's just, it can make a hypoglycemia spell happen, which is a sugar drop. There's, there's other things that can happen in that transport. That's why you really need to be sure you get that puppy checked as soon as you can when you get it home. Make sure it's, it's uh, doing well from its transport. Another thing they're not going to guarantee a puppy if you let it walk around on the ground or be around other animals for a certain time until, like, their parvo, let's say, for instance, vaccine kicks in because you can actually even go and pet a dog and come home and pet yours that's got parvo, the dog you pet, and give it to your dog if it's not, if its vaccinations haven't kicked in. And even then, it might get a light case of it. That also happened to uh, me when years ago when my kids were still at home and they were teenagers and one of my kids, my youngest one went and visited a person that had a dog that had been being treated for parvo, but they said it was over it, but the dog looked so bad and was so skinny looking and stuff. And my son was petting it and didn't know any better. And he come home and was loving on our dog and told me all that story. And I said, oh my goodness, you know, and I was, and I know he didn't know, but I called our vet and it was time for our dog to get uh, her new Parvo vaccine booster or whatever they do it for the year. But he said, since it wasn't quite time, he said, now we don't need to do it until we know she doesn't get it. But he said, if she does get it, it'll probably be a much weaker strain of it because she's got some kind of protection left in her body. Hopefully that was true, but it didn't come, at, she didn't come down with it. So it worked out, but just always be careful about putting your puppy on the ground especially in a dog, a dog park or anything, look in your contract to make sure what it says about doing all that. Ask your vet what you should do about all that. Because even when we brought our puppy home, puppies home, these two girls here, the vet wouldn't even let us uh, put them on the ground until they had finished up their last checkup. And even then, you know, they recommend a certain amount of time before you do that. So always be sure you're careful of illnesses. Read carefully what your contract says. See, I'll get off in the weeds about all these things that don't matter. What this is about is looking at your contracts. Now, some contracts, like I said, people say, you know, this puppy, I sold you this puppy, uh, take it to the vet within how many business days? Three, we'll say. And then it says this puppy's guaranteed for 30 days. Boom, that's the end of it. You don't hear another word out of them. They don't ever follow up with you. They don't want to know about the dog. Uh, they just want to sell the dog and get the money out of it. That's the lowest contract I've ever seen. I actually have even bought one Chihuahua when I first got married, didn't know any better. And that dog was just sold to me for cash money out of a barn that I wasn't allowed to go in, which now I know was a puppy mill. And there was no written contract or guarantee on that dog. 
and it wasn't very healthy. But now, many, many, many years later, I know better. So another kind of uh, contract I've seen, it says health warranty and purchase contract in together. And it'll start out, you know, it's agreed between the seller and the buyer as following. You put the puppy sex, the date it was whelped, the color of the dog, the microchip number. Sold at the price so on this one, it's an example, $3,500, including $300 non-refundable deposit in full at time of sale, excluding shipping and handling. And they really get specific. That's a Tennessee contract. And it adds in the state tax if at applicable on the uh, agreement. It just says seller guarantees at the time of delivery, the puppy's in excellent uh -uh. health no, and no. up to date on the immunizations, vet visits, deworming, um, when they take possession, when the buyer takes possession, and the vet records will be available for the buyer. And then it goes on, the buyer's got three days to have the puppy looked at. Uh, it names all the things that are not covered on the guarantee, like listed out one by one by one. And uh, so, you know, there's uh, different things. If a, if a vet finds a, a licensed vet finds a pre-existing condition, then the seller will cover up to so much money worth of treatment for the puppy, you know, all these things. It goes on. This one here has a two-year extended health warranty from the date of birth on up to any debilitating congenital defects. There's warranty specifically named for hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, eye conditions that are genetic in origin, genetic heart disorders that are serious enough to require treatment until two years of age. And if the dog's found to have any life-altering life conditions within the first two years, the buyer We'll provide a seller with a copy of, uh, let me see, with a copy of the OFA report, if they find something wrong, maybe. Okay, <laughs> Bougie's down there groaning and sleeping. Um, yeah, and it says the vet cannot make the diagnosis, only it only can be made by OFA pin hip or accredited hip specialist. So before I sell a puppy, that's all gonna be done on my dogs. They won't be bred. My females won't be bred if they fail any of the testing. So far, so good. Um, the puppies will be DNA tested for health when they are born. I mean, when they're little, before I let them go, they'll be DNA tested. I'm gonna do the best I can on that. Now it also will stay in here that there's some things that genetically you cannot predict. And uh, because people that, you know, human beings can't predict illnesses that they'll come down with when their parents didn't have the illness ever, you know, in their DNA. So you just, you know, there's, you gotta kind of be specific in these things, I think. Some of the agreements say that you agree to make sure they have tick and flea preventative, but you don't give them the oral kind because it can cause seizure. Some sellers will even be that specific. I recommend you follow your contract to the letter. If you want something else in your contract, ask your seller if they'd be willing to put that in there if it's not in there and just cover each other. And it'll say the you know, sometimes the warranty won't include allergies or shedding issues that are not supposed to happen. And because you can't guarantee that. You can only DNA test and hope for the best. Um, they can't guarantee temperament or how big a dog is going to get or bacterial illnesses that catch from each other <clears throat> or if they've got an improper bite, if you want to show the dog or they can't guarantee ear infections or hernias or things like that. You know, they'll sometimes knock some of the price off for a hernia and it won't, that won't kill them. But... Uh, a friend of mine bought one, a dog like that, and I forgot it wasn't going to be, it's going to be like $100 to fix a hernia. That should all be covered. So do your own research. You know, what is covered and what is not covered, I will say, should be uh, addressed. And if you don't need a whole lot of, a, of, a, of an extensive printed up guarantee and your seller doesn't offer one, that's all about, you know, whatever you decide to do. Um 
these these agreements don't include physical injury e either. And I would definitely say, if you get a puppy, do not let many, many people hold it. Or if a child holds the puppy, have them sit down with it. They could drop it. They could damage its skull. You know, a puppy could jump out of its, you know, the child's arms or even an adult's arms. Or another dog could get a hold of it and injure it. And it's all those things. While you would think that would be normal to not cover that, it needs to be spelled out, I think. Now, when I make my agreement, I don't know yet what I'm going to do. I have not gotten that far yet, but I, I'm going to uh, have it all done. And I'm going to probably take the pulse of every one I can find online to see what people do because I'm kind of that way on things like that. I, I will just get a general consensus, <clears throat> excuse me, of what uh, I feel like should be done. Here goes my mowing allergies again. And that's what I will do. Hold on a minute. Um, there in the picture, in the video, I'm making their ice water. Paris loves to play in that ice water, and they all love to eat ice cubes. Just side note there. So on your health agreements and your purchase agreements, there's so many of them online. There's some of them on Etsy. Uh, there, you're, there's, um, I don't know. There's all kinds of places you can look. Find a lawyer that specifies you know, in that. Ask them what they recommend. Ask your vet what a good contract looks like. You know, cover yourself as a buyer or seller. Sellers don't need my advice generally. I'm the one that needs the advice a lot of times. I'm <laughs> just, I'm new at this breeding thing and I'm learning and I'm not an expert, but I do research and I do know just for what I've had and experience in my life, what I would like and what I wouldn't like. But every little thing that you're concerned about, be specific about it. As a, as a seller, I'm going to be specific that this, you know, these puppies can't be, uh, you know, kept outside, thrown outside. If they are and it's reported, they're going to lose, they're going to agree to lose the dog and it's going to come back to me because I just don't want to be a person that contributes to an animal being abused. I don't think people will pay that kind of money for an animal and then, then not want it, though. That's my... There's been several people contacted me already, and they have expressed interest and, and, and agreed to wait until November 2023 when I do decide to breed my, breed my females if they're healthy, pass all their health testing, and... Uh, People that are doing that, they're not going to be neglectful of an animal. That's what, you know, that's what I say about that. There's people that just get in a mood at Christmas to get an animal. I, because seeing the jobs I do, I see this. I drive a lot. And I see, right before Christmas, animals, little bitty puppies outside at the door squalling. And they've got a leash for tied up to them. Because the owner's frustrated and they throw the dog outside because it's potting in the house. The dog doesn't understand. It's out there crying at the door and begging to get back in. And, and you know, I don't know what happens to the dogs. I don't know if they live. I've seen them get beat. I've heard, had neighbors of uh, these people tell me, you know, these dogs are getting beat and kicked and screamed and cussed at. And they tell me about this stuff because they know how I am about dogs and I will cry over this stuff. And, uh, I don't butt into people's business generally, but I have a couple of times called um, pet rescue places and reported when I've seen this go on. Because, I mean, if you don't report what you see, then you're just as guilty, in my opinion. I don't want to be a busybody or a know-it-all, but I'm not going to... That animal can't talk for itself. So, anyway, in the agreement, that'll be there, that they, they get treat it properly. I mean, ex educate yourself. If you decided to buy a dog, um, start learning how to housebreak it properly. Because if you learn how to do it, it's going to be a whole lot easier for process. And if you get your dog from a good, reputable breeder, they generally have already been working on it and maybe already pretty much perfected housebreaking before you ever bring the puppy home. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on housebreaking as soon as they are able to do it. So... 
Um, they're going to ra- maintain, want you to maintain the dog at a healthy weight on some of these agreements because the, the overweightness of the dog will make it get joint problems, hip problems, and things, and they're just covering themselves on it, which I think that's awesome. Uh, we ha- we battle with weight issues with our dogs here because Pet Dad likes to feed them a lot of snacks, but we can also exercise our dogs better. And we just kind of check them, and if they start looking a little heavy, then we start cutting back on the snacks. Uh, that's that, Some of the things that are in these health agreements, they can go from one end of the spectrum to the other. So I've got a little bit of time left. I know my last video, I did address something, and I want to go ahead and do it again just because. But I wanted to say there's, a, there's been three people out of all these lots and lots and lots of comments and videos that I put up. Three people that have decided to get on our comment section. And uh, one of them was saying something about, I don't know why people want a golden doodle. If they want a dog that doesn't shed, why don't they just get a poodle? They're, they're this and they're purebred and they don't shed. Well, the reason why that we don't get poodles is because we wanted a golden doodle. That's, that's it. It's America. It's our right. If we decided we wanted to get a poodle, we get one. And some of us do. So, uh, but I just wanted to tell you, uh, the other couple of people that were saying they're not purebred, they're crossbred, and they were complaining, none of your comments saw the light of day because I've got a filter on the comment section because I want our comment section to be a happy place. I want people to feel at ease and comfortable about chatting back and forth in the comment section. I don't want anybody to have to feel attacked. And, and you can have a suggestion, and it doesn't have to agree with us. But uh, if you're going to sound hateful or, you know, be judgmental towards someone that just because they want a golden doodle, then your comment's not going to get posted and it's going to get blocked. You're going to get blocked and banned because you need to go over to a hater channel if that's what you're here for. If you want to make a suggestion about something or whatever, that you feel free. I'll look at it. I'll pray about it before I kick it off. But if it's just mean or it's somebody that's miserable in their own life and lonely and wanting any kind of attention, even if it's negative attention, it's going to be, it's not going to be posted because we're going to be happy here. We enjoy our golden doodles. We like to learn about our golden doodles. We want to be the best pet parents we can be. We're deciding whether or not to be pet parents by watching videos and so on. So... I, that's all I wanted to say. I, I can even crank that filter up a little higher if I want to, but right now, so far, it's good. I've had a few people that had things to say about they go to rescues and get their dogs and all that, and I went ahead and let that be posted because it's fine. If you want to go to a rescue, that's okay. I have rescued dogs in the past, but I work, and if I want a golden doodle, I'm going to buy one. That's it. This is still America. You can still... Get the car you want, the house you want. If you can afford it, work for it, save the money for it, you're allowed to get it. Uh, I know there's dogs that need rescued, but don't hate people or judge people because they don't get one. It's If they can get a dog, let them get it. You know, I don't go to bars or some stores and shop because that's not my type of store. I just don't go, but I don't yell at everybody else for doing it. You know, that's what my point is. And I know everyone knows that. But in this world we live in today, it's almost like if you want to do something that is not mainstream uh, popular, do I want to say now, or it's not the trendy thing to do, then you're automatically a bad person. If we want golden doodles, yes, we're going to get one. And... This place right here is not going to be the place we're going to get judged for it. So, you know, I hope you guys all enjoy watching the videos. And I I really hope you enjoy watching our dogs because that's what I'm posting them for. Letting people watch them grow and change and watch them when they get their uh, grooming. And watch them when they're eating ice cubes and literally sticking their whole face in the water dish and blowing in the water and making a mess on the back deck. That's all fun to watch, you know, for me and for other people. You can live vicariously through someone else if you maybe don't have a place to keep dogs or or not healthy enough to keep a dog, you know. But anyway, I want to to take a minute before this runs out to thank everybody so much for that subscribes or watches or comments, even if it's just 
in a general comment. Doesn't even have to be an attaboy comment. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for holding back on uh, things that might not be a good comment for someone else's feelings. Um, who loves golden doodles? I hope that there, uh, some of the people that watch and are not subscribed, that they'll subscribe because the more I get, the more my algorithm gets pushed up to the front where my uh, videos get shown, like suggested more. It means everything to me. I, I do. I, my kids are grown. My grandkids have grown up. They don't need to be watched anymore. And I'm, my life is my dogs. And I look very much forward to seeing uh, the comments and the subscription subscriber thing grow every day the counts i love to read the comments hey go groomer from the go groomer channel came by the other night and, and left a comment i mean that was like the greatest thing ever she came she left a comment for me and she's my hero i watch her groom dogs and she's so good at teaching people and also rover's makeover on youtube is another one she's really good at just like doing tutorial type teaching. You can watch her, you can learn so many things. There's a lot of good grooming channels out there that you can learn from. So uh, I, don't, I don't know for sure of anything else that I've left out, except be sure you brush your doodles every day so they don't get matted. Um, keep an eye on their ears for yeast infections because they get them easily in this hot weather. Enjoy them, love them, let them watch these videos. My dogs like to watch videos on TV, and I have to watch them uh, because they get pretty wound up. Look at that water dripping off Paris' face where she's in that video where she's been putting her face down in that water dish, blubbering in that water, that ice water, that ice cubes. In that something, that's a happy dog right there. She is happy when she's sopping wet on her face and been digging around and stuff. She likes to dig in the yard and get moles, too. I'm just showing you how pretty her hair is, how healthy. She looks gray there, but she, I'm telling you, she's shiny black. White on her legs, it's, or silvery white, and black the rest of the way. Um, let's see. I believe that's about it. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.